Hi guys and welcome to a, another video by the Heel Paint Expert. In this video I'd like to talk to you about shockwave therapy and hopefully cover some of the most frequently asked questions about shockwave therapy. So first one, what is shockwave therapy? Well the techn technology stems off of lithotripsy uh, which is used to treat kidney stones. So a shockwave is like a high energy sound wave um, and there's an applicator which is applied directly over the skin so there's no breakage in the skin and these sound waves travel through the layers of the skin down to the diseased tissue. Now the aim of this um, treatment is to break up the degenerative uh, tissue associated with the injury. This then kickstarts the healing process. Uh, at least that's the theory behind shockwave therapy. The next question, when to consider shockwave therapy? Well, um, the majority of the research on shockwave therapy is done in chronic cases of soft tissue injury such as plantar fasciitis or Achilles tendinopathy. Um, so chronic can be anywhere between three and six months since the initial onset of the injury. A little bit of um, disagreement amongst professionals of when exactly the, um, the chronic phase starts, but I tend, to, I tend to say around three months or beyond that. Um, there has been some research looking at shockwave therapy in the acute phase, which means within the first six weeks of the onset of the injury. However, there's not so much research look, looking at it at this stage, and the research which is available suggests that it's perhaps not overly beneficial in addition to conventional treatment. Um, how does it work? So, uh, basically, the sound waves break down the degenerative tissue uh, in the plantar fascia, so the aim is to reduce the thickening of the plantar fascia. Um, inside this fascia, there is believed to be scar tissue, which will be broken down, and something called neovascularization, which is an influx of sort of nerve endings and blood vessels, and this is believed to be associated with the disease process and has an influence on the levels of pain that people experience. So what does the treatment involve? Well, as I've already touched upon, the, um, there is an applicator and this is attached to um, the machine and an air compressor. So the air compressor is what gives the shockwave machine power. So the applicator is applied directly to the skin and a bit of ultrasound gel is um, is applied in between the skin and the applicator and the purpose of the ultrasound gel is that it's a medium for the shock waves to pass through. Um, you have a course of three treatments or at least that's the most common protocol uh, which are typically done one week apart so I tend to do one uh, weekly intervals of shockwave therapy and I tend to always do three sessions I never do less than that some people do require additional sessions depends on the severity and the chronicity of the problem after those sessions I then review patients back at six weeks and then 12 weeks after that and that's because the effects from shockwave therapy are not a quick fix it's sort of a graduated improvement over time so we have to be quite patient when knowing whether a patient is responding to shockwave therapy. Uh, does it hurt? Uh, this is a question I get asked by uh, all of my patients prior to proceeding with shockwave therapy. Uh, the short answer is yes a little bit um, but the experience varies massively for, uh, between patients. I have some patients which tell me it's you know as bad as a nine out of 10 on a, on a simple scale and other patients who have zero out of 10 pain. I would say as an average, probably most people experience about a five out of 10 pain. So it's manageable and um, I've never not been able to treat somebody um, and get them through the session and there's no anesthetic that's required. Are there any side effects? Well. Shockwave therapy is very safe, but it does come with some minor side effects. Um, this can include uh, swelling or a inflammatory response from the shockwave therapy treatment, and in rarer cases, bruising can occur as well. Um, for some people, it can be temporarily numb after the treatment, and this is a bit of a bonus, really. So uh, shortly after having the shockwaves administered, the, um, it can create some num numbness to the area treated and that can give some very temporary pain relief. Um, that happens in a minority of cases in my experience. I would say most people don't feel a great deal different initially after the treatment, but some people do report being quite sore for the first couple of days after the treatment. 
Um, is it safe for anyone? Well, no, not for anyone, but it is safe for most people. Um, some contraindications include pregnancy uh, and patients taking anticoagulant therapy uh, for blood disorders. Um, and that's because if you are taking a blood thinner such as warfarin, um, this can increase the risk of, of bleeding um, as shockwaves um, are a high impact. So it could create excess tissue damage which could result in excessive bleeding. So that is a, a contraindication. Um, generally though, it's, it's very safe for most people. Other things to consider are implants and surgery. So um, you wouldn't want to do shockwave therapy near um, a previous surgical site where there might be metal implanted. Um, a history of cancer as well is, is another contraindication. So what are the differences between radial shockwave therapy and focused shockwave therapy? Well, the differences lie in the technology used to, to administer the treatments and um, how that works. So in a focused shockwave therapy machine, the applicator is, is quite a large instrument and the aim for that for that those shockwaves are to be um, targeted very specific to a, a very small site hence the name focused um, this is typically done for deeper tissue injuries um, such as um, tendinopathy of the shoulder joint where the joint is actually quite thick and getting down to the area the tendon you want to treat can be very tricky with a radial shockwave therapy machine so this in this scenario a focused shockwave therapy machine might be actually more beneficial and there is evidence to suggest that focused shockwave therapy is better than radial shockwave therapy in cases for shoulder problems. Uh, however, as, we, as we're more concerned with uh, plant fasciitis, well the majority of the research uh, looks at radial shockwave therapy and this is where the applicator is actually very small so it, um, it sort of looks like the handpiece looks a bit like a, a small gun if you like and the shockwaves radiate out from the applicator so the area which it covers is is much larger the depth of those shockwaves are more shallow in comparison to the focused method however it's deep enough to penetrate where the plantar fascia tissue is so the research on radial shockwave therapy uh, outweighs the research on focus for plantar fasciitis, meaning that there have simply been more studies on it. And what we know from those studies is actually it's got pretty good efficacy. Um, that's not to say focus shockwave therapy is not a good option and it can work. It's just not a necessity. Um, so why doesn't it always work? Well, like any treatment option, um, shockwave therapy is certainly not the um, you know the magic bullet. It, it doesn't have a hundred percent success rate. Um, in my experience, I would say the success rate is around seventy percent. Um, so. If I had treat 10 patients, I'd expect seven of them to respond very well, if not get a full resolution. That still does leave a 30% um, case of patients which aren't responding to the treatment, unfortunately. And this is what pretty much what the research suggests if you look at the cumulative uh, evidence of everything that's been published to date. So why it might not work is that it could be down to the state of the tissue. So if it's particularly very degenerative and chronic, um, the aim of the shockwave therapy to, to sort of regenerate and heal the tissue might not just been able to do its job. And that's because we have to accept there are limitations with, with the science and the you know how effective it can be. Uh, other reasons are down to um, other causative factors. So let's say the main reason for one patient is that they are overweight and that's what's the driving force for their plantar fascia as it's increasing the load on the plantar fascia. Um, despite having shockwave therapy to help heal the tissue, because of the excess weight, the tissue just simply isn't able to heal. Uh, another sc scenario could be uh, another patient who has extremely tight ca calf muscles and for them this is the most um, prominent factor as to why they've got the plantar fasciitis and unless that soft tissue tension is addressed um, then the shockwave therapy may not be effective enough to help heal the tissue so shockwave therapy um, by no means is a magic cure and I don't use it in isolation so I would use it as an adjunct treatment to other treatments um, which are aimed at treating the underlying causes and that can be very individualized for the patient so as I said it's an adjunct uh, not a standalone treatment uh, final question do I recommend it yes I definitely do recommend it uh, and that's based on the fact that it's considered an evidence-based treatment and of the evidence-based treatments for plantar fasciitis, it is right up there, possibly 
uh, one of the strongest for um, proving its efficacy and consistency for treating patients in chronic cases of plantar fasciitis. So personally, I don't use it um, for a patient if they've had plantar fasciitis for less than three months, but anybody who's had it for more than three months, it's certainly a conversation I have with my patients at the initial consultation, as well as looking at what other treatment options we can do for it. So I hope hopefully that covers all of the main questions um, on shockwave therapy for plantar fasciitis. If there's any other questions I've missed and, and you would like me to answer, um, please leave a comment and I'll be more than happy to do so. And I hope you found the video uh, informative and useful. Thanks, have a great day.